Hi everyone, my name is Arne Thor, and I've spent the last 20 years doing what I'm passionate about, which is to use my creativity and collaborative spirit to enhance patient care through innovation. I'm the co-founder of Elevate, a next generation medical device company. Today, I would like to share with you a novel approach in the use of carbon fiber to preserve energy in gait for drophic patients. What is our purpose and what do we believe in? Starting with that would lead us to how we differentiate and what products and services we offer as a company. This quote here is from an Aller patient, but I liked it so much since it really speaks to why all of us are passionate about this industry. Mobility is the key to good health and prevention of long-term health complications. And Elevate is in the business of improving mobility and allowing patients to keep walking. We believe our purpose is to help clinicians reduce their headaches while helping patients improve their mobility. At Elevate, we understand the nature of healthcare and the pressure you as clinicians are under with change in reimbursement, not enough time in the day, and increased need for outcome-driven solutions. We believe that our products meet those needs and are focused to help you achieve your goals. Elevate's mission is to empower people to move by redefining how healthcare products are designed, manufactured, and delivered. I wanted to share a short video at the beginning of our presentation because it really speaks to our why. Robert, like most of us, wants to live a healthy and active life, but due to his disability, has faced many challenges in his past. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert. I'm 39 and I came from Poland. After I was born, uh, the diagnosis was the club foot and the drop foot. Since that time, uh, I was supported with uh, many different uh, orthotic uh, suppliers, but unfortunately, they had a lot of side effects on my feet. I want to share with you the brace which I used to wear every day. And please, right now, just look at my foot. All you can see, this is a skin irritations, the scars, all made by plastic. The design of this um, uh, brace, it's not um, very nice as well and not supporting me very much uh, and the active people like, uh, like me. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm very active, uh, very active person. I'm workaholic. My passion is boxing and I never, never slow down. So the look of my feet is the price I pay for using uncomfortable FO. As a team at Elevate, I can't express enough the satisfaction of receiving this personal note from him, telling us about his challenges, followed by a tremendous amount of success from what we have created. We will talk more about Robert later on in this presentation. In this section, we will talk about drop foot and condition, as well as other muscle impairments around the ankle, and specifically focus on its impact to the entire foot and ankle complex. As clinicians, we all understand drop foot and how it can result in falling and ineffective gait. What we tend to talk less about is how drop foot can often be associated with malalignment of the midfoot and hindfoot, and how this malalignment can both negatively impact gait efficiency, but also, if not treated properly, can lead to long-term deformity of the foot and a significant reduction in quality of life. When we talk about mobility and drop foot, the implications are significant. The primary goal of gait is energy conservation, and when we break it down as how we preserve energy and optimize gait, we need to look at the primary locomotor functions for optimized gait, which are shock absorption, stand stability, propulsion, and excursion of center of mass. The interaction of the skeletal structure, ligamentous arrangement, and dynamic muscular control combine to achieve these goals. The importance of the foot in motion is underestimated until one of its components fails and begins to derail its overall function. Because of the foot's essential role in locomotion, failure in any one component can greatly affect an individual's overall activity level and quality of life. Rapid restoration of normal function is important to restore the normal level of activities and prevent detrimental effects on the system, such as deformation, joint instability, and structural collapse. It has also been shown that 5 to 10% of those present with a propulsive gait sustain injury that keeps them from returning to a pre-injury level of function. Given that drop foot as a condition results in impairment of muscles around the foot and ankle, we should understand the primary purpose of these muscles. The purpose of muscles is twofold, to provide a guiding force to affect chains 
in position of the foot during use. The other, sometimes more important purpose, is to also be a shock absorber for weight-bearing energy. In this role, they act as protectors for the nearby ligaments, preventing prolonged stress or overstress by their action. Their connection points to the body are critical to determine how they move the foot and ankle, not only as it relates to dorsiplanar flexion, but equally as important to eversion and inversion. Ligaments help define the function and degree of motion that joints are permitted. They behave like a bungee cord, absorbing energy by stretching and slowly releasing it as pressure is removed. Too much force, either acutely or over time, can cause the ligaments to stretch and not return to its original shape, and this deformation leads to joint instability and structural collapse. This is important to understand since the appropriate early intervention is critical to prevent long-term issues, and as I'll continue to explain, this involves more than just the sagittal plane, and once the muscles are impaired, the foot and ankle must rely solely on the ligaments for support. The weight in position of the calcaneus provides optimal foot and gait mechanics when closest to per perpendicular to the ground. The more normalized the foot and ankle are in all planes, the more efficient the patient's gait becomes, allowing for increased activity, promoting overall better health. Patients who present with draw foot, particularly those who have draw foot secondary to hemiplegia, demonstrate an asymmetry in weight bearing during standing, as well as asymmetry in weight distribution during stance phase of gait. This asymmetry is caused in part by an imbalance of functioning and non-functioning muscle groups. Over an extended period of time, the structurally unbalanced meta-unstable foot becomes less correctable. Apparent weight-bearing foot position and consequent foot structure has been linked to foot, knee, and hip osteoarthritis, causing pain, swelling, immobility, and deformity. It's important to note that these biomechanical abnormalities of the foot and ankle are modifiable, and there is potential for clinical studies and future developments of interventions to help prevent or treat these abnormalities, which may improve functional ability post-injury. Let's now talk about the principles of AFO bracing to treat drop foot and specifically explain a new novel approach in the use of carbon fiber to preserve energy and gait. We talked about the why, how improving mobility for patients with muscle impairment is a reason for a lot of the things we all do in our work, but what about the how for Elevate? When it comes to innovation in orthopedics, I've often witnessed a direction towards technical innovation which sometimes doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense for the patient. What I firmly believe in is it, as it relates to innovation in this space is more indication focused, that by diving deep into the specific biomechanical impairment, one can first truly start to comprehend how to best improve and innovate with current devices out there. Specifically in Drawford, we believe that the key is to provide the appropriate dynamic support at the right time to allow the people to improve their mobility. Now let's talk about the specifics of an AFO. An AFO is a support intended to control the position and motion of the ankle, compensate for weakness or correct deformities. The primary goal of a drop foot AFO is to optimize the impaired gait, improve mobility and quality of life by appropriately stabilizing the foot and ankle and to provide toe clearance during the swing phase of gait. When selecting the appropriate device for each patient, one must evaluate multiple variables in all planes throughout different phases of gait. When talking about drop foot, especially as it relates to off-the-shelf devices, we as manufacturers tend to simplify the problem by talking just about the sagittal plane, forgetting the importance of the frontal plane and transverse plane. As you're all very well aware of, that there are multiple options to choose from when it comes to a drop foot AFO. I won't go into too much detail there, except to emphasize that the features and character characteristics of an AFO depends both on the material as well as its geometrical shape. In search of the perfect AFO design, one must first look at what some of the disadvantages are to current AFO designs. The use of thermoplastic can limit the ability to provide a low profile design that is comfortable to wear, fits nicely into the shoe, and that allows the foot and ankle to move in a dynamic way. The appropriate use of anterior versus posterior style carbon AFOs can be improved to ensure that patients are receiving the appropriate level of support. 
and current off-the-shelf solutions, while dynamic and functional in nature, are limited in their ability to control more than one plane of motion effectively. Let's now talk about dynamic versus static control. Normal gait is optimized for energy conservation. Given the dynamic nature of the foot and ankle, it would be logical that external control that is dynamic more perfectly restores function, such as motion when and where needed, shock absorption, stance phase stability and proper alignment, propulsion, optimum excursion of center of mass, and to eliminate deformative forces. Immobilization creates functional instability by hindering a person's ability to walk, blocking normal functional biomechanics, inducing soft tissue atrophy, and increasing energy expenditure. For pathological gait, one should consider dynamic treatment option to best restore normal optimized gait. When considering the sagittal plane gait mechanics, our goal with an AFO is to optimize the loading conditions during the entire gait cycle. A posterior strut design would be recommended for pure dorsiflexor weakness, and an anterior strut is recommended for when you add plantar flexors and mild knee instability. And let's dive into that a little bit. Patients with dorsiflexor weakness need the plantar flexor support at heel strike, but then no support at toe off. The benefits of a posterior design with the strut connection at the foot plate far posterior is twofold. A, a three-point pressure system at heel strike ensures maximum area coverage to minimize pressure and keep the brace appropriately on the leg. And secondly, at toe off, the long distance from the strut to the toe portion of the foot plate ensures that the brace doesn't impede with already active muscles. For patients with plantar flexor weakness and mild knee instability, more support is needed both at heel strike to control knee flexion and at toe off for push off. At heel strike, we don't believe the brace is optimally designed for dorsi assist due to a smaller area of coverage on the posterior side. The benefits of an anterior design for plantar flexors, however, is twofold. A three point pressure system at toe off, which maximizes area coverage to minimize pressure and keep the brace appropriately on the leg. The now shorter distance from the lateral strut to the end of the foot plate at the toe compared to the posterior design makes this anterior device more rigid in forward flexion, providing greater support than a posterior design. With this in mind, we believe that an anterior brace is over-designed in cases where you're only dealing with dorsiflexor weakness, and a posterior spiral design is not the most appropriate when dealing with weak plantar flexors and or knee instability. Now let's look at the frontal plane control. At heel strike and moving into mid stance, your foot dynamically pronates in order to absorb shock by distributing the impact forces generated from the ground. With impairment of the dorsiflexor and sometimes plantar flexors, your foot may overpronate, causing ligaments to stretch and the gait becomes strained. If not addressed appropriately, the condition will continue to progress, leading to a fixed deformation and a collapsed arch. Current solutions are primarily static and include insoles, a static strap, and or a thermoplastic molded shell around the foot. Insoles are limited in their effectiveness, as is the static strap. The molded shell is most commonly used to treat overpronation, however, it does so in a static way and is therefore uncomfortable, potentially functionally unstable, and causes challenges for patients in regards to comfort and shoe selection. The introduction of carbon pre prep to off the shelf AFOs in the late 90s brought a new novel approach to treating patients with drop foot and other muscle impairment. Carbon AFOs have become the gold standard of off the shelf AFOs, however, due to challenges in fabrication, have not become as widely used in custom AFOs. Carbon AFOs are considered to provide significant advantages to drop foot patients over thermoplastic AFOs through its high strength to weight ratio and dynamic properties providing energy return and propulsion, which may lead to increased muscle activation and more efficient gait. A more physiological gait can increase walking speed, activity, and confidence in patients. Lastly, increased comfort for patients through a better fit in the shoe and with less surface area coverage due to its high strength to weight ratio, overall comfort is improved. When we consider the appropriate device to use for a drop-foot patient, we must consider both the sagittal plane as well as the frontal plane. Like I explained earlier, off-the-shelf carpet devices somewhat took over the drop-foot market 
in the early 2000s, but only as it relates to sagittal plane stability. This is due to their poor effectiveness in controlling frontal plane instability, where today custom devices are still the most appropriate device. Even though an anterior design was the first known off-the-shelf carbon droplet brace on the market, we have explained how a posterior design is more appropriate when only dealing with dorsiflexors. Thermoplastic custom AFOs still today represent the largest portion of the market, primarily due to its ability to control the frontal plane. Its challenges, however, remain the same in regards to comfort, fit in the shoe, and its lack of dynamic properties. And later on in this presentation, we intend to show how our novel approach to off-the-shelf carbon AFOs may provide an off-the-shelf solution for some of those patients traditionally treated with a custom AFO. This brings us to the new Elevate AFO-1 product line that we would like to discuss, designed to empower movement, addressing the needs of both patients and clinicians. We talked about why and how we do what we do, but what about the what? In our approach as to what we create, we want to ensure that our focus is both on the patient and the clinician. For the patient, we have created high-performing dynamic AFOs that are designed to not only address the sagittal plane, but also the frontal plane and the transverse plane. For the clinician, our products can create a quantifiable impact to your clinic to improve operations and reduce complexity. The product line coming to market in Q1 of this year consists of three products. The AFO-1 Free Flow is a posterior design carbon AFO for dorsiflexor weakness in a comfortable lateral posterior strut design. The AFO-1 Ascent is an anterior design carbon AFO for dorsiflexor weakness with mild gastrocnemius and quadricep weakness while minimizing tibial pressure. The Helix Band is available for both the posterior and anterior design and truly expands the patient population appropriate for a custom fit carbon device by dynamically influencing the position of the midfoot and calcaneus to control either varus or valgus instability throughout the entire gait cycle. Let's look at the AFO-1 free flow in more detail. It's a carbon fiber AFO used in industry-first compression molding process where extremely high pressure removes voids and increases strength while providing a very consistent premium cosmetic finish. A thermoplastic heat multiple glass filled calf shell with a cool flow liner system ensures comfort and breathability. The BOA strapping system allows for a very easy one-handed donning and doffing while providing easy tightening for support. A height adjustable strut that can accommodate leg lengths from extra small to extra large in a single size. The product is adjusted with an Allen wrench that is provided in the box. A posterior lateral strut provides a very easy and comfortable fit in the shoe while providing maximum support in the backward direction for dorsiflexor support. A trimmable foot plate that can also accommodate foot lengths from extra small in a, to extra large in a single size. Product can be trimmed to size with scissors and a polishing tool is provided in the box. And lastly, the box allows the clinicians to stack the product cleanly in the office while minimizing space required. With the AFO-1 anterior, we incorporated the same novel features of the posterior. We use the same novel carbon layer technology to ensure minimized void content in the layer for durability. But the other unique feature of the design is the relatively large range of spring type support going from the foot plate up to the calf section. This allows for a very wide range of flexibility, which significantly reduces stresses at the foot plate and improves overall durability. It should be noted as well that with the BOA strapping system, we have elim eliminated the distal calf strap for comfort and ease of use while maintaining the required function. The single BOA strapping system allows for a very easy one-handed donning and doffing while providing easy tightening for support. And in the case of an anterior design, the strapping system becomes very important at heel strike to ensure that the brace appropriately stays on the leg while providing support. If the strap cannot be sufficiently tightened, the brace will move away from the leg and minimizes the support. The anterior design has a mid-lateral strut, which provides a very easy and comfortable fit in the shoe while providing maximum support in the forward direction for plantar flexor support. And lastly, the adjustable features we talked about on the previous slide. 
With all the features and benefits discussed for the patient, let's now dive into the impact to you as a clinician. Like I explained earlier, the products have been designed as one size fits all, covering sizes from extra small to extra large by providing a trimmable foot plate, strap, calf, cuff, and liner, and allowing for vertical adjustability and a heat formable calf cuff. This reduces your stew count from 10 to 2 in a left and right configuration, significantly reducing inventory complexity. In addition, we have provided an accessory box with everything needed for a perfect fit, allowing for the ability to travel off-site and fit a patient immediately without knowing the size needed. The third product launched in early in 2021 is the Helix Band. The Helix Band is a new patented strapping system from Elevate that dynamically influences the position of the midfoot and calcaneus to control either varus or valgus instability throughout the entire gait cycle. It's designed to function in the same way the ligaments and muscular attachment work when providing the necessary dynamic stability and proprioception. It can also provide additional dorsiflexor support when needed. It comes as a one stew adjustable with an adjustable level of dynamic support in all three planes and recommended to build under L2270. We are extremely excited to introduce this product into the off-the-shelf carpet category because we believe it can provide clinical benefit that no other official carbon AFO offers today and allow more ben patients to benefit from the carbon technology. It should be noted that this chart is just a guideline and clinicians should choose the right AFO depending on what works best for individual patients. They should pick the AFO that supports lack of function but lets the active muscles work. With the addition of the helix band, we believe that the patient pool appropriate for a custom fit carbon AFO has been expanded with great benefits for both patients and clinicians. In the past, if a patient had even a slight frontal or transverse plane instability, really the only effective solution was a custom carbon AFO or a thermoplastic custom AFO. The Helix Band offers clinicians an option for a good portion of patients that traditionally would have been fit with a custom AFO to control the frontal plane. This provides a product that is more comfortable fits better in the shoe and reduces the potential time required to spend with the patient by reducing an entire visit. We have been testing our AF01 products for the past 12 months in two countries across multiple clinics with a total of about 50 patients wearing the AF01 product line. And now I would like to introduce Monica Seipart to talk about some of our patient and clinician feedback. Monica has over 20 years clinical experience and runs her own practice in Poland. Monica has been testing our products for the past few months and would like to share some of her findings. Hello, everyone. For the last couple of months, I had an honor and real pleasure to test Elevate's AFOs on my patients. I have had different cases in my test group of 12 people, different ages, sex, different drop foot etiologies, different activity levels, and of course, different expectations. All of them were using previously other orthotic supports, so after they joined the test group, they had a chance to compare a variety of factors and activities based on their past experience. Let me highlight now what they have achieved. Increased walking speed, distance and quality. Increased calf muscle size with just two expansions where it couldn't be measured. Increased knee and foot and ankle stability improved balance and confidence, increased quality of life, and increased energy for daily activities. This slide shows what 39-year-old Robert can do with his new AFO Ascent. He was born with a club foot and lack of function of his foot flexors and extensors. As you can see, he's a very active person, but the devices he was using were more of a limitation than a support for him. Robert has very strong thigh muscles, but at the same time, he has lots of impairments in a knee, foot and ankle stability. Unfortunately, no response from dorsiflexors or plantar flexors at all. Elevate's ascent gave him great support in terms of the knee, foot and ankle stability. The ground reaction force and dynamics he gets with every step made him exceed his expectations and the impossible turned possible. 
Watching his video, we can see that uh, he's simply an amazing example of an extreme motivation to not give up. Marta, 54-year-old lady with neuroblastoma. She had 11 surgeries on her calf and during one of them, the fibular nerve was cut. She couldn't wear any standard orthotics as most of devices with back support made her tumors grow and caused pain. For the past 20 years, she's been suffering from a drop foot and lack of proper orthotic supplies, which made her develop severe pain in her spine and hips caused by compensatory locomotor paths. Ascent from Elevate solved all her problems within minutes. She cannot imagine her life without her new AFO anymore. What touched me really deeply was that Marta started crying after starting to walk normally again with Ascent. Her husband was always complaining about her walking too slow and now he asks her to wait for him as he is not as fast as she is. She went from being the slowest in the family to the fastest. Her body balance is significantly improved as well as her step length, speed and confidence. Her pain is gone, so she lives her life again. Her words, thank you for the new life. You gave me back my leg from 20 years ago. Just melt my heart. Renata, 33-year-old hairdresser who had to learn again how to live after a stroke she had two years ago. Two young kids and only her left hand to work with. She was right-handed. Plastic AFOs caused lots of scars on her foot and ankle and simply weren't good enough for her. She also struggled with swelling caused by many straps that were stabilizing plastic devices on her leg. She is still in the rehab process and is fighting every day to get as many functions back as possible. Elevate's free flow helped her improve her gait path and dynamics. The circumduction was visibly reduced and for the first time since stroke, she was able to feel the whole plantar surface of her foot. I must admit that the helix band had an exceptional role in it. Renata is super fast and she's not afraid of stumbling or falling anymore, which is great. We have also noticed significant belly circumference increase in the past four months wearing the AFO product line from 31 to 33 centimeters. Of course, every case is different and we cannot put the drop foot ideology to the one box. For me, the most important is always to choose the right product based on lots of tests and the patient's evaluation. Everyone is different. So my path is to follow my patient's needs, support their impairments, but not to block the functions that may be improved. My priority is to achieve the highest mobility goals. Thank you. I'll conclude this presentation with some key takeaways. We've talked about the patient forward design of the AF1 product line that can expand the patient population currently fit with off-the-shelf carbon AFOs. It can be fit anywhere and anytime with all the tools you need as part of the box, which also allows for off-site patient fittings. And with the one-size-fits-all durable design, inventory is drastically reduced for a more efficient clinic operation. Thank you very much, and we will now open this up for questions.